From Idaho's News Channel 7, this is Viewpoint. Welcome to Viewpoint, I'm Joe Paris. It's almost here, the primary election day. It's actually this Tuesday. And you can tell that we're in campaign crunch time every time you turn on your TV or radio, right? Yesterday, I saw six political ads in a row at one point. And airing those political ads one after another, after another, after another, well, that's one way for the candidates to get their message and name out. Another, though, is through debates. Now, debates have been a long-standing tradition in Idaho politics, a way for candidates to contrast themselves with their opponents and lay out their positions on the key issues of the day. Now, more importantly, it can give voters a crucial opportunity to see the differences and hear the policy stances so that they can make informed decisions. Now, this year, a few of our debates were canceled because the candidates declined to participate for a variety of reasons. Now, KTVB still hosted two debates this campaign season for hotly contested races, one for superintendent of public construction, which we recapped here on Viewpoint a few Sundays ago. The other for secretary of state, which we are focusing on here this morning. And the secretary of state is a constitutional officer in the executive branch of Idaho's government. The secretary is responsible for running the state's elections, publishing state documents, licensing businesses, and other business services. They also sit on the coveted state land board. They serve four-year terms, and the winner of the Republican primary will face Democratic candidate Sean Keenan in the November general election. And the Republican candidates are State Senator Mary Souza of Coeur d'Alene. She is serving her fourth term in the Idaho State Senate. State Representative Dorothy Moon of Stanley is serving her third term in the State House of Representatives. And Phil McGrain has been the Ada County Clerk since 2019. He serves as Chief Deputy in that same office from 2010 to 2019. As I mentioned, debates are a chance for candidates to contrast themselves with their opponents, and the Secretary of State candidates tried to do that, starting with their opening statements. Here's a portion of each of those. I'm Senator Mary Susan. I'm running for Idaho Secretary of State to protect your votes, to protect our elections, to protect our businesses, and to protect our endowment. The th these are the three main responsibilities of the Secretary of State. As the chief election officer, uh, I definitely want to make sure that we maintain uniformity and consistency in our elections, and that is a goal that I will strive for. Uh, people in Idaho do have concerns about election integrity, and I have uh, understood that as I've traveled around the state and talked to thousands of people. I've been privileged to be a part of our elections for almost 17 years, from when I started counting ballots when we still voted on punch cards, training poll workers, finding polling locations, and I've worked my way up to over oversee all aspects of our elections. And you can watch the full debate on KTVB.com and the KTVB YouTube channel. And today we're going to focus on a few of the key issues in the race for Idaho Secretary of State, including election integrity and security, voter accessibility, and the Secretary of State's role on the state land board. And joining us this morning, Betsy Russell, the Boise Bureau Chief for our partners over at the Idaho Press. And Betsy joined us on the debate panel a number of nights ago to ask questions of the candidates during the Secretary of State debate. Uh, typically, the Secretary of State race is pretty low Low key, you know, there's attention on it, but it seems that there's extra attention on it this go around. And Betsy, we'll start with this. Why do you think there's so much attention on Secretary of State? Do you think it comes down to, I guess, the huge focus across America on election and election integrity? Absolutely. I think there are a number of factors that are driving this, Joe. And uh, the national picture is certainly the largest, but we also have an open seat for Secretary of State in Idaho. This is rare that this seat is open. We have had historically the same person serve as Secretary of State for many, many years in Idaho. Pete Santarusa, followed by Ben Sursa, and now Secretary of State Lawrence Denny has been in for two terms, and this is coming open. And so it's a wide open race, at the same time that there's this national controversy about elections, which are such a big part of the Secretary of State's role. And we have here three candidates who are taking very different approaches. How big of a difference do you think the actual uh, candidate makes in the role of Secretary of State? They do a lot of important work, but I guess how big of a difference can these candidates have in that role? Is it, I guess, a big difference between, I guess, if Phil McGrain is elected, it could go one way. If Dorothy Moon, it could go a completely different way. Or is there less room for wiggle there? I actually think that who is the Secretary of State can make a huge difference. And it's less of a political role than some of our other state constitutional officers. And I think all of these candidates have acknowledged that. But it's a role that really, really relies on competency. Whoever is in that office needs to do a good job of what they do, or our elections will not run right, 
our state records will not be kept right, our business licensing will not go right. And so competence, I think, really is the number one thing we look for in an Idaho Secretary of State. But secondly, there are very, very different political approaches among these candidates as well. Well, let's talk about election integrity again for another moment. Here's what the candidate said when asked, where do you stand and where do you think Idaho stands on election integrity and what changes need to be made to our electoral process, if any? Here's what they had to say. We have smaller issues in this state, not as large as the battleground states that we saw in the 2020 election. However, if we don't take care of these small issues, they become big issues if we let them go. So to make sure everybody knows that our elections are safe, to make sure that we're consistent, we just have to make sure that we have an ID, we make sure we don't have affidavits where you can just sign a piece of paper saying who you are uh, when you may not be a registered voter in that area. And that's this just little safety you know, precautions, we can take that can make sure everybody has you know, belief in the system. We have a scorecard from the Heritage Foundation for Idaho that is election integrity scorecard for every state and Idaho does not rank well. We are ranked only 38th out of 50. So we have many areas that we can use this scorecard to go down and secure our elections in these areas of vulnerability in Idaho. What are those areas of vulnerability? Oh, I will be happy to tell you, thank you. Uh, they are voter ID, they are ballot harvesting, they are ballot drop, unmanned ballot drop boxes. They are assistance in residential care facilities. My opponent mentioned the ranking from the Heritage Foundation. The, one of the things that stands out on their rankings, the number one state in the country is Georgia. The number one state in the West is Arizona. And I don't know what election they were watching when it comes to 2020, but that's not what stood out. Idaho was successful. We were one of the first two states to finish having our results on election night. And it's because we band together. Too often there are groups back east that think everyone lives close, but we all know out here in the west, we don't. Idaho's legislature has made our laws to fit Idaho. And I think that's so important to the integrity of our elections. And I'm proud to be a part of the system that we have here. I thought an interesting storyline heading into this election season was the, I guess, audit that the Secretary of State's office did on the 2020 presidential election. There was these major claims by people like Mike Lindell that the state of Idaho had glaring issues. But after, you know, the full forensic audit, Idaho didn't have those election integrity issues that they were charged with. So it's interesting now to hear the candidates talk about that. Do you think as a candidate, it's more of a conversation about being proactive or being, I guess, corrective in past actions, again, with the establishment of not any evidence that there was a major issue in 2020. So again, this is an area where we're seeing different approaches from these three Republicans who are facing off in the primary. I think that um, the legislature this year passed legislation proposed by the governor to do proactive audits in the future, just to check and make sure that everything's right even though we really have not seen major problems with election integrity in Idaho. But here we have um, a couple of candidates who basically say there are problems with election integrity in Idaho. And in particular, Senator Souza citing the Heritage Foundation scorecard, the things that they focus on, voter ID, Idaho has had a voter ID requirement for years. We do have an affidavit um, provision in that. It is very rarely used ballot harvesting. We have had multiple legislators, including Senator Souza, propose anti-ballot harvesting bills in the legislature, and they have all said, actually, this has not happened in Idaho, but it's happened elsewhere, so we just want to make sure it can't happen here. And drop boxes. Drop boxes for ballots, when there are many people casting absentee ballots, have proven extremely popular in Idaho. And when there was legislation from Senator Souza that was heard in a Senate committee to get rid of them, County clerks from all over the state came in and said, that means that people in my county are going to have to drive for an hour and a half or two hours to drop off their ballot rather than just have it right down on the corner. And basically, there are things in place in Idaho that from all appearances seem to be working very well. Now, Senator D'Souza says, well, we just haven't checked. Actually, things probably are going wrong, and we just don't know. And then Representative Moon says, we have small problems. We've got to fix them before they turn into bigger problems. And I think that we hear Phil McGrain saying, here's what we're doing now to make sure that we don't have problems.
And a major conversation has been about accessibility, and critics of the legislature say that lawmakers, they worked hard to make it, I guess, less convenient or more difficult for some <laughs> Idahoans to get to the polls and to cast those votes. Um, we asked the question of lawmakers. We asked, are you concerned with efforts by lawmakers to make more voting more difficult? And, you know, how would you deal with that as Secretary of State? Here's what the candidates had to say. Absolutely. I think there's a really important thing that we need to balance. Uh, there's a lot of talk about elections integrity and election security, and you've already heard that here tonight. But one of the most important things is we should not make things so secure that no one can access their vote. Similarly, we shouldn't make things so accessible that it's open for fraud. I've spent my career making sure we have opportunities here locally for people to vote. I think one of the best examples of that is the expansion of early voting. Early voting is the most secure form of voting, and it's because of the database and tools that we have to assist people. I think that what we need to do is to, to secure our system, and I think some of the efforts that came forward during the last session were good. Some were not well-crafted and probably should not have passed, but what we need to keep our eye on is how secure are our systems, but how safe is your vote? And there has to be the balance between those. The United States is known as one of the most uh, easy systems, not at all the most secure system. Let me tell you that the Carter-Baker Commission in 2005 said that the United States should absolutely go to, to photo ID required at the polls. I don't think there is one person I met with who thought that asking for a, a government-issued ID is unreasonable. Mm -hmm. uh, I think everybody knows they want them to present an ID, especially when you hear of a Costco card or student ID card, which was easily counterfeitable, which doesn't have a birth date, that doesn't have an address, that doesn't have citizenship. All it has is a picture and a random number. There, people are concerned that the students are just given these cards, uh, like you do get a Costco card, they just pop right out readily. So those are the, those are concerns. And yes, I think we, I don't think we're going to keep anybody from voting if they really want to vote. And it was an interesting juxtaposition there, too, to listen to uh, Senator Susan, Representative Moon, talk with Phil McGrain, the clerk, saying that these are problems that you're facing. And then you have the clerk standing there. He basically says, no, they're not happening. When you talk about the, the voter ID, over the last several years, Betsy, I mean, how big of a deal has it been to have voter ID? I know there's the, the affidavits that you can sign day of. But the conversation to me seems that I didn't realize there was so much attention on it. Right. And, and Idaho has had a voter ID requirement for quite a few years now, and when it first came in, I think there was some trepidation about it. How is this going to work? Is everyone still going to be able to vote? It's actually worked fairly smoothly, and it was Phil McGrain who recently shared statistics about in Ada County, 98% of voters actually show their driver's license, and a very tiny percentage use a different form of allowed ID or sign an affidavit. So the system actually is does appear to be working the way that it is. Both Representative Moon and Senator Souza have proposed sweeping changes in legislation that did not advance this year to all of the current rules, including really making it harder to vote, harder to register to vote, requiring more proof of things like citizenship. And county clerks from all over the state also came to Boise to testify against Representative Moon's proposals and said, we've got people who have been voting their whole lives and we're gonna ask them to show a birth certificate and maybe they don't have one. A lot of older folks don't. Basically, the argument, and we heard this from Canyon County Clerk Chris Yamamoto, was that these rules would be harder on existing Idaho citizens who've been voting for a long time than they would be on anyone trying to game the system. We're going to take a real quick break, but coming up next on Viewpoint, we're going to hear from the candidates on how they see their roles in encouraging voter turnout, and we're going to talk about their role on the state land board. Viewpoint continues after this. Welcome back to Viewpoint. Today we're focusing on the race for the Republican nomination for Idaho Secretary of State among State Senator Mary Souza, State Representative Dorothy Moon, and Ada County Clerk 
Phil McGrain and breaking it down with us this morning. Idaho Press Boise Bureau Chief Betsy Russell. She joined us on the panel the other night asking questions during the debate. And Betsy, you asked a question that I thought was really interesting. You asked the candidates if as Secretary of State they would work to get the vote out, something that we've seen differing, I guess, uh, I guess the way they do it, we've seen it differ between different Secretary of States in recent years. Um, before we get into that conversation, I want to know, why did you ask the candidates about what they would do about encouraging people to vote? Well, that's always been something, you know, in all my years in Idaho, that, that Idaho's Secretary of State has made a top priority and has really been an advocate for, is getting more Idahoans to vote. And our voter turnout in Idaho, you know, it's better than some states, but particularly in primary elections, it's quite low. And the percentage of registered voters is one thing. If you look at the percentage of voting age population, the votes in primaries, the vast majority of Idahoans do not vote. So it's a very small number of people making decisions for everyone. Well, that's not really how the system is supposed to work. We have a system in the United States basically of self-government. We're all supposed to decide what we want our government to be. And for that to work, ideally, Everybody who's eligible probably ought to vote, unless for some reason they don't want to. And so the Secretary of State has always taken a leadership role in that. I was very surprised by the answers that we got from one of the candidates. Yes, so let's take a look at those answers, because they were very different. And as Betsy mentioned, I was surprised by one of them. But here's what the candidates had to say. Let's start with Representative Moon, who said yes, that it would start with election education for her. Betsy, it would be huge in my priorities. And I do think it's a matter of uh, the youth understanding how the process works. They don't even understand what precinct committee men are. They do not know about regional uh, Republican parties or Democrat parties and how the whole system, how you can start even as a precinct committee person to become involved in your community and government. So I think, I think that's where I would start. And I have talked to schools about these, you know, how the system works and how to get involved. But to just stand on the sidelines isn't where we want our youth today. We want them involved. I have a different look at that. I do not think that it is a Secretary of State or even the county clerk's uh, role to increase turnout for any one party or even turnout in general. That is the role of the partisan groups, the interest, special interest groups, people who are very supportive of a candidate or a ballot measure, that's what they are supposed to be doing. What the role of the Secretary of State is, is to make sure that the election laws are enforced and they are clear and they are understood by all the citizens. I agree with Representative Moon in terms of education for voters, getting the information out is important. Uh, most of you watching recently received a postcard in the mail informing you of the opportunities you have to vote in the May 17th election. I think that's an important part of the process, whether it's for the Secretary of State or whether it's for the county clerks, is to make sure voters are informed when they have the opportunity to vote and give them the tools. I think one of the greatest successes that we've had locally is providing a tool not only to look up a voter's polling location, but voters can go to our website and look up their specific ballot so that they can make informed and educated decisions on who they're going to be voting for. One of the things I would love to see as Secretary of State is expansion of voter information to the public. Public. And Betsy, you followed up with Senator Sousa to clarify. You said, you know, Senator Sousa, you really mean you're not going to go out and encourage Idahoans to vote? And she said, no, I am not going to. At this point of an election, and this point of a cycle for Secretary of State, have you ever heard something like that? I have not. I was completely surprised. Part of the reason that I asked the question was the, the real variation we've seen in, in recent years is that our previous Secretaries of State were always so focused on voter turnout that they made a turnout projection before each election. And I wanted to know if these candidates would bring that back because our current Secretary of State, Secretary of State Denny, has not made those projections. He's felt that he didn't have the basis for them. He, he, he couldn't give an estimate. Um, and it went way beyond that. Um, really, Senator Sousa's position that only the partisan groups and the interest groups should be responsible for voter turnout basically misses everybody else who might not know there's an election, might not know where they're supposed to vote, might not know, you know what's on the ballot. Um, and I, the very idea that a Secretary of State would rely on partisan interest groups who only want to turn out their voters for turnout would leave out this other group of voters. And so, I mean, I think if, if voting is for everyone, if voting is a, a right and an obligation for citizens, one would think that 
we wouldn't just want partisan interest groups with a stake, an axe to grind in, in what comes out of the election to be those in charge of turnout. Yeah, you make a good point. And we know in Idaho, I mean, there's several, almost 100, over 100,000 unaffiliated voters. I think it's 300,000 unaffiliated voters in the state. So if they're not with the party, it's interesting. You make a good point. Another big part of the Secretary of State role is a seat on the land board, and the land board provides direction to the Department of Lands in managing more than two and a half million acres of state endowment trust lands in our state. Now, endowment trust lands are tied to specific funds and beneficiaries, including public schools, state hospitals for the mentally ill, and the state veterans' homes, as well as the juvenile correction system. Now, the question we asked the other night of the candidates for the Secretary of State, saying if you're a voting member of the land board, which the Secretary of State is, the question is, how do you balance public versus private land issues and conversations as a member of the board. Here's what the candidates had to say. I live in North Idaho and timber is huge in our area. We are the center of timber revenue for the endowment lands actually. There are other places but we are the most prolific up there. Idaho has lost, the concern is that Idaho has lost 40 percent of our forest firefighters and it's because our base pay has been low and our neighboring states have increased their base pay and they've also added hazard pay because these are high risk jobs. In the past session the Idaho Department of Lands budget it was a certain bill, and they increased the base pay of our firefighters in the forest up to $15 an hour, which we all know is lower than most McDonald's people that are starting out working there. Many may not be familiar with the land board. It uses our natural resources to provide funding for public education and other beneficiaries. Last year was a record year with $100 million going towards public education. I have the relationships to be successful on the land board and to tackle some of the tough issues. Natural resources have been the backbone, specifically timber, as you've already heard mentioned. I'm very proud to have the support of the logging contractors here in Idaho. I'm proud to have the support of the cattle association and the grain producers and all the people who work hard on our land to produce the value that goes to our school kids. As a member of the land board, I would work with all the partners involved to make sure we maximize the return just as the Constitution calls for. First of all, we shouldn't be competing with other businesses. I remember when I first really started watching what the land board was doing and we were involved in a brew pub and also some storage units. We do not compete with other businesses. We get out of Idaho's you know, business way and let them do what they need to do. Uh, I do believe though that we need to work with the Forest Service and uh, with the Good Neighbor Authority to where we can actually extract wood and reduce these fuels because we're going to have a, a bad fire year this year. We had drought last year. We need to be recharging these aquifers. These are the sort of things on the land board we really need to be having high alert on. Um, the fuels reductions are important and if we can go in and make money on these forests to help our folks within our state boundaries, we need to do it. Of course, there's a lot of attention on elections for the Secretary of State, but a seat on the land board, how valuable is that? How important of a seat is that? The Secretary of State is one of five voting members of the land board, so that is a significant role, and it is not uncommon for there to be divided votes on the land board. I thought all three candidates um, really paid attention to this and are aware of the issues and that significant role that they would play. Betsy Russell from the Idaho Press joining us this morning on Viewpoint. Thank you so much for joining us, Betsy. We're going to take a real quick break, but Viewpoint will wrap up just after this. You can watch the full debates for Secretary of State and Superintendent of Public Construction on the KTVB YouTube channel or on KTVB.com. And there are dozens of key races in the May 17th primary election, now just two days away. For more on what you can expect on your ballot, text the word VOTE to 208-321-5614. We'll send you a link to our Idaho primary election voter guide. The guide also has info on voter registration, polling locations, and party affiliations. Make sure to join us on Tuesday night for Decision 2022 election coverage. Polls are open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Of course, you got to remember in North Idaho, close at 9 p.m. Mountain, 8 p.m. on the Pacific time zone. So we'll get some local election results coming up at 9 o'clock on Tuesday night, Mountain Time. Thanks so much for joining us. We will see you Tuesday night for election coverage. For now, though, we'll say goodbye. See you next week on Viewpoint.